Hi everyone! The next Queen song is the next Queen album. I understand we're moving to a new album entitled Jazz. Well, knowing Queen, I'm not surprised that they name a rock album Jazz and who knows what sort of games they're going to play with it and what sort of styles we'll find there. I assume it's not going to be all jazz. But then again, they might surprise me. We'll see. Before I read about what's going on with this piece of music and even what the name of the song is, remember you can always check out my Coffee and Patreon pages. Um, we have some special things going on there right now. We're starting a new, we're starting to develop a series of live meetings, gatherings, and a lot of fun stuff like that. Check it out if you're interested. So. What do I have to read about this one? Jazz is Queen's seventh studio album released on the 10th of November, 1978. The album's varying music styles, okay, not all jazz, were alternately praised and criticized. It reached number two in the UK album's chart and number six on the US Billboard Top LPs and Tape chart. Well, that's interesting. I guess I'm not surprised it was, bo was both praised and criticized, but you know, it seems like this is actually something I was thinking about and maybe I'll talk about it a bit more as I go through this song, but the idea that it just came to me recently that rock music is a genre which is so closely identified with less than a handful of specific instruments. We've had this discussion about what makes a piece of rock music rock as opposed to something else? And there's been the discussion that it's not just about musical style, but also musical instrumentation. And as I'm getting into progressive rock and the idea of bringing in other musical elements from different traditions and even instruments, what makes it still be rock? And well, I don't want to digress too much right here. I might save that for a separate discussion, actually. But, but here, clearly, if they're experimenting with even more different styles, then, well, leave it to Queen to call it rock. Mustafa, the first song on the album, was written by Freddie. The lyrics consist of Arabic, Hebrew, Farsi, Avestan, and English, and possibly a number of invented words. Some understandable words are Mustafa, Ibrahim, and the phrases Allah, Allah, Allah will pray for you, Salam Aleikum, and Aleikum Salam. It also uses a sentence in Persian emulating gibberish, reflecting Mercury's Farsi background. Parts of the lyrics like Akhtar es na shole don't judge me on my pronunciation, please. Meaning, his star, not his flame, have clear ties to the Persian language. In live performances, such as the performance on Live Killers, Mercury, Mercury would often sing the opening vocals of Mustafa in place of the complex introduction to Bohemian Rhapsody, going from Allah will pray for you to Mama just killed a man. What an interesting transition and juxtaposition. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun. Well, now, let me let me also say before we go to this that Vlad told me just as I was sitting down that this piece of music is not one of Queen's big hits. And he's aware of that. But he chose it specifically because he wants me to see as much variety, stylistic variety, as possible in this Queen 50 series. So that's why he's picked this one, which means I expect some interesting stylistic details. We'll see. And let's have some fun. Ibrahim. Ibrahim 
I'm watching a a comedy movie about some I don't know Arabic Persian something or other uh story but it's comedic it's it's it it sounds like I'm watching some guys driving down the road in a car and something that's supposed to be conveying the cultures of another land but there's something always tongue-in-cheek about it it's it's really cute and quirky and funny all at once. <laughs> <laughs> what fun. Hilarious. Humorous. Just a lot of fun. It started out, I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to get immersed in this sort of Arabic world. It sounds like the sort of the sort of um, chanting, it was, it was so atmospheric. And then suddenly all of this other stuff comes and wait, no, this is going to be something to make you laugh. Like, it really feels like I'm watching some scenes from a comedy film. To me, that's what it feels like. Okay, let's go back through and pause along the way. Sound, I feel like I'm watching a scene five o'clock in the morning oh, hold on <laughs> five o'clock in the morning call for prayer you know at a mosque it's setting the scene for this well and and here's where it can get a bit complicated if we want to if we want to be all um, careful and respectful towards all the different cultures and everything. This sounds to me like well fortunately it's Freddie drawing on his on his own heritage, so I can't I I can't say that he's being somehow culturally appropriative for something that doesn't belong to him. But but it feels like the whole song overall, the feeling I got was that it's not exactly that world. 
It's more like a, a representation of that world. It's supposed to give you the, the flavor of that world without actually you being there or being from there. It's kind of a, an outsider's view in a funny way, in a lighthearted way, um, a non-serious perspective. And so we're starting with a sort of the style of what we associate with a call to prayer at a mosque, five o'clock in the morning. And as I said, I wanted to take it very seriously at first and immerse myself in the, in the sound world. But it doesn't let you do that for long. Suddenly, we're thrown to, hey! Oh, wake up, hold on, this is, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be humor. This is going to be comedy. And from there on, it changes. Now, going back and listening this second time, I have that in my mind. And so when I'm hearing this opening, I'm hearing it as if it's setting the scene for this whole comedic story that I'm about to view or hear. Isn't it interesting how just the first time hearing something we have different impressions than ever after sometimes. We're so reliant on our memory and context, but the first time it always hits us a bit differently. Already the second time, I have a slightly different perspective of this opening. That's Freddie's voice. <laughs> and he's imitating this hey! so well. Mustafa, 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 Ibrahim. Mustafa, 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 Ibrahim. The way he's using the way he's using these little musical figures and and um presenting them in a way that sounds so, shall I say, Arabic. With this bing, 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 underneath it to give the kind of rocky vibe, but still the way he, the way the melody is going. You can, you can easily imagine it becoming just purely Arabic um, with with authentic instruments and um, vocal s uh, arrangements and stuff like that. And so what he's done is he's taken this flavor. I guess it's kind of like, it's kind of like taking a, I'm going to go for the food example again. It's like taking some authentic flavors, spices, uh, sauces, um, dishes, taking the recipe to another part of the world. And you want to, you want to keep the, the core of it. You want to keep that, what is now perceived as an exotic experience, um, because it's experienced in a different part of the world. But maybe the ingredients we have there aren't quite the same. Or maybe since we are feeding a different palate, we have to adapt it a little bit to keep it maybe not quite so spicy so that they can actually eat it without their mouth burning up or, you know, you get the idea. It's, it's just um, this feeling of he has, he has managed to bring the flavor of another part of the world, another culture, another way of life, um, another entire musical tradition and give us that a taste of that flavor in this contemporary rock style it's really great Bye, Ibrahim. Mustafa, 
I was talking about the comedic element that I'm picking up in this and and I'm thinking about the way he's mixing this religious um, clearly religious elements into this in a comedic manner and it reminds me of of some of the movies by um, let's see is it Louis de Funès um, some of his comedic films where Okay, now it's France, and of course it's Catholic. It features a lot of the nuns, but still this kind of comedic slant on, on religious practices, the religious traditions. I feel like it's kind of the same thing here. And it's the sort of thing that I, as an American, would feel very nervous about doing because I'm not from that part of the world, and, and I don't have... Um, I don't have the experience nor the life to draw on to do it in a way that would feel right to me. But Freddie, obviously, he had his roots in that part of the world, and he was able to he was able to pull it out of himself and place it here in this really classically Freddie manner, where he, he makes no apologies for what he's doing, and he doesn't try to be reverent at all. It's, it's just him playing around and having fun, and, and uh, we end up with this incredibly vibrant piece of music as a result. Okay, yeah, I know, I just stopped here, but, but this, this guitar, or maybe it's the bass, you know, it's boom. Boom. Almost like... Almost like it's a elephant grunting or... To go even more crude, I could say it sounds like somebody burping, you know? <laughs> it's just this funny little boom. Like a... Like a... Um, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the... Hot springs, mud fields, mud pots, where it just kind of bubbles up and then flops down, and and it's that sort of sound, and it comes out of nowhere, and it's again, it's this joking around and and making it kind of funny here. <laughs> recorded and and the sound is balanced there are different things coming from different sides of my headphones now in this section and it kind of makes it a little bit more dynamic and it's who's where doing what hey! such a great moment of silence guitars over here voices over here Hill, the hill, the big 
<laughs> I almost feel like it should have gone on a bit longer. Something going on. But instead, ah, we've had enough of this. Hey! Done. Really hilarious. Well, let me just say, Vlad, this was a great choice for showing me yet another style that Queen can throw out there. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking about this idea of versatility that, that Vlad is highlighting in this series for me. And, you know, it's, it's easy to always pick out elements that we, we recognize either as coming from our own personal stylistic experiences or from what we understand about the development of a style. And sometimes when I'm listening to a piece of rock music, I, I find myself saying, oh, that, that is really a blues style. That is really a jazzy style. That is really this or that. But in the end, it's not about whether there are blues elements or or gospel or jazz or classical or any other elements because this is a genre in its own right and yes it has historical roots and and links and we hear those when we find them but we're not just sitting here trying to find some thread of something that we can say oh it came from there it's a bit different than that. This is a genre in its own right. It is rock. It is a big umbrella, but is it is its own umbrella and it owns everything under it in one form or other. And it's kind of refreshing and fun and enjoyable to hear a piece of rock music that is not tending towards the blues and the gospel and jazz soul music, neither is it tending towards the um, kind of progressive rock, pulling classical traditions, neither is it um, doing what Queen often does and, and going towards the um, kind of Broadway stage type musical styles this is this is different well of course we could sit down and say well this call and response comes from but but no not really let's let's think about this this is this is a piece of rock music that is building its entire sound world from the influences from an entirely different part of the world and I find myself not thinking at all about blues or any of that. I find myself instead hearing the links to this other part of the world. And it's cool and it's fun and it's, it's refreshing. And Queen has done it fabulously. I mean, Freddie's voice at the beginning. This is not his operatic voice. This is not his rock voice. This is not his gospel voice. This is, this is a voice coming from yet another part of the world. And it's so clearly linked. We can't avoid it. It's so beautiful. All the way through the piece. That's what sticks out. To me, probably to all of us, of course it's entitled Mustafa. It's intentionally d doing that, but isn't it great fun? To, and, and not just fun, but really wonderfully, artistically, musically wonderful to have a genre, a musical tradition, which is so identifiable in its own right, go exploring and bringing in elements from other traditions, um, other parts of the world, 
other cultures. And I know rock music has done a lot of that. So has classical. Um, they do it in different ways, sometimes very similarly. I guess just just the song before this, I was talking about how how French 20th century uh, French music really drew on the American jazz traditions. And so there are some similarities there as well. But I guess that's what I appreciate about this piece of music. It does show something else that Queen pulled off incredibly well. But more than that, it shows how, how enlivening and energizing this open-mindedness and this willingness to embrace and explore any kind of music and see how it can enrich what we have. And if we take that and we kind of expand it to our whole um, way of life, this idea of being willing to open ourselves up to a part of the world maybe we've never thought about before. And what does it have to offer us? What do the people there have to offer us? What can they give us that maybe we don't have or, or that can enrich us? And maybe not just other parts of the world, maybe just the neighbor down the street. You know, it's, it's a great thing to really think about and see how do we apply this in our own lives? How can we live this? Because art is something that is meant to really have a, not just a philosophical impact, but a really to the heart impact to connect us heart to heart and to change us, to shape us from the core outwards. So anyway, well, I got kind of philosophical there, didn't I? <laughs> what a fun piece. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm eager to see what comes next and I'm sure that will be soon. I'll see you soon.